and Sharon, and I do the NoSillaCast podcast. It's a technology geek podcast with an ever so slight Macintosh bias. And uh, I do, it's a tech podcast. I do mostly Mac stuff, and like I said, with a you know, fair amount of bias on that. But uh, we also talk about uh, photography, we talk about Linux, we'll occasionally let some Android people have conversations in there, talk about gadgets and all that sort of thing. But uh, today you guys have been brave enough to come to a presentation that has the word death in it, and I mean actual death, uh, believe it or not. Um, I'm going to tell you a story of something that happened uh, in our lives, and uh, it sort of a, a, was an awakening to us of things that maybe we should do in our lives to, uh, to make sure this doesn't happen to our friends and family. So um, this is Tim and Alice reporting. Did anyone here ever listen to the Mac Review cast? Yes. Yeah. So um, Tim, unfortunately, passed away last year. And uh, Tim, as many of you in this room probably are, he is the geek in the family. Anybody here not the geek in the family? Right? You guys are all the geek in the family. So this is actually exactly tailored for you because you guys are the geeks. Alice is not a geek. She's a norm, she's a muggle, I don't care what word you use for it, but she's a regular person and she doesn't know anything about technology whatsoever. So, actually let me back up a little bit. So Tim, uh, Tim passed away and uh, she called me up on the phone and she said, she said Allison, um, Tim didn't trust any of us with his, with his computer gear and his electronics and everything, so he actually had a lock on his door so that nobody could get into his stuff. So nobody knew anything about anything that was in his studio. And, you know, he had microphones and, and uh, you know, speakers and uh, computers and storage and all these kinds of things that all of us have, and yet nobody knew how to get into his stuff. So she was trying to figure out what to do. She was in, um, she was in Wisconsin, and she asked whether somebody from the Mac Roundtable, which is a group of us that all podcast together, said, can, it, can somebody come to my house and, and figure out what to do with the computer? And I remember the first call, she said, I need you to help me with Tim's Mac. And I said, well, okay, well, let's, uh, you know, we could go into Skype and we'll do a screen share. And she says, oh, no, I turned off the internet as soon as he died. <laughs> okay. It's in a garage. She had unplugged it all and put it all in the garage. That's when I came into the plot. So she had to figure out what to do with this ginormous room full of equipment. So she mailed it to my husband and I. These are the, she mailed 22 moving boxes. She paid $2,800 to ship it to me, hoping we could sell it. So we started in the hole, $2,800. Now, this came at a very lucky time uh, for us, anyway. Uh, Steve and I had just retired, and so we had time to take a look at this. So uh, here's a picture of Steve and our good friend, Dorothy Rendon, who's in the front row there, starting to organize all of this junk that came in our house. It was absolutely a astonishing how much stuff uh, she shipped to us. I've got a real short video. Let's see if this will play. Okay, so we're, uh, we're just about done with day one. and. Uh, I don't know, what do you think, Dorothy? You think we're, we're, we're pretty good, right? Yeah. We're going to check it out. Yeah, I might want to buy that. <laughs> okay, so let's keep going here. That is actually a box that has been collated and, and tagged, and that one's ready to go. We got bags over here, we got speakers galore. This is the table of misfit toys. We don't know what to do with that stuff. Is. And then we've got manuals. I'm obsessed with keyboards. <laughs> So I, I'm sure all of you wouldn't want your dirty laundry out on a video like this showing the things that you had laying around. But th this, this kind of brought up the idea of, well, what can you do to make sure this doesn't happen to the non-geeks in your life? So we had a Mac round table where a bunch of us got together and, and talked about this, and, and I had the immediate experience of what had happened. But we got together a lot of great ideas. So I sort of have to give credit to the rest of the Mac round table. But let's see. None of them are in the room, so no, they didn't do any of the work. This is all right. <laughs> So we're, we're going to go through, I think it's four key areas to consider. And the number one thing is, who could access your passwords if something happened to you? So we're not just going to talk about if you die, but what if you just were disabled in some fashion? You were in a, just a, like say a one month coma, let's do something just kind of, kind of short term like that. What would happen? Who has access to those passwords? What services would you want to have continue if you were incapacitated or worse? You know, I mean, if I'm dead, maybe certain things wouldn't matter that much, but if I was just incapacitated for a while, maybe I'd really care that certain things continue to exist. And I'm the only one who knows the, what those things are. How organized are your electronics? <laughs> Mine pretty much looked like Tim's until we started thinking about this. So, you know, you might think about some things you can do to organize them that are maybe low, low impact. I'm not into real high impact, let's make this all really difficult stuff. So the solution's going to be pretty good, I think. 
And, and what could you document that would protect your interests, that would allow your, your friends or family to not go through what Alice went through? Oh, if I see anybody taking notes, by the way, all my slides are available on slideshare.net. And so at the end, there will be a link so you can write it down. So you don't have to take any notes. I mean, you can if you want. If you like playing with your iPad, that's okay. So the number one thing, who knows your passwords? This was probably one of the most tragic things in the plot. Tim had a really sweet little MacBook Pro. It had a 256 gig SSD right from Apple. Um, it was a few years old, but it was still worth a lot of money, except he had a combination lock on it. So we had to pay a locksmith 50 bucks to saw it off, which of course damaged the case a little bit. It wasn't bad considering what the thing had gone through. So we lost, uh, I don't know, about $250 on the sale of this item. It's probably the most expensive thing we were able to find. Oh, I forgot to say, yeah, the motherboard was dead too, so that took some of the price off. But it got us to thinking, who knows your passwords, you know? Because if, if she had known the password to this combination lock, that would have saved us uh, $75, what, what we lost all the money. So if you are not already using a password manager, please get one. I have no religious uh, affiliation with LastPass or 1Password. I happen to use LastPass. Uh, my friend Dorothy did an exhaustive research study of both of them, and when she was done, they were equally good, so just pick one, but pick one. Uh, get yourself a password manager and make sure that somebody knows what your LastPass is, what your 1Password is. Because if you have all that great information and then you're, you're snuffed out, all that stuff just ceases to exist. Nobody has any way of getting into your information. So consider sharing that password with somebody you trust. Um, maybe you want to put it in a safe deposit box with a, you know, to be opened upon my death. That's okay too. I talked to a guy last night who said, uh, he said, well, my problem is I change my one password every two months. It's like, okay, well, you're crazy. So. <laughs> no help in you. Some people talk about print it, cut it in half, and give it to two different people. I still don't understand quite what that one actually does, though, because if those two people know they have it, can't they just go in and go into it right now? <laughs> I, I don't understand that one, but people think that's entertaining. So, but if you use one of these, uh, does anybody here, anybody here not using one of these? Everybody's uh, a couple people on? The, uh, basically, what these tools do is allow you to have one freakishly hard password that you can remember, and then you don't have to ever remember any of your other passwords ever again. It's absolutely, they're fantastic. They generate these crazy passwords you can't remember, but you don't care because you only have to remember that one. Now you make that one freakishly hard, but all the others, and you don't care how hard they are because you don't have to remember them. You can put in secure notes for credit cards, for uh, you know websites. Uh, I know, yeah, I see that little clench of, ooh, credit cards, that makes you kind of cringe. But right now, those pieces of information are sitting in little notebooks right next to our computer. So the guy robs your house, grabs a computer, grabs that notebook, you're, you're dead anyway. So um, it, these are really, really, really well safe, uh, well vetted, safe ways to uh, protect your passwords. So think about what would happen if your credit card got canceled while you were uh, incapacitated. Is probably the more important one in this case. So uh, if your credit card got canceled because no one paid the bill, because no one knew the account password to go in and, ch and, and pay the bill, you're going to start to see a ripple effect of what's going to go wrong. So as we go through these slides, keep thinking about how many things are connected to your passwords and what would happen if those things, that, that actually cease to be there. Do not let your email account disappear. You, you need your, your non-geek family to know not to let your email account uh, go away. The one saving grace was that Alice did not cancel Tim's email account, so she was able to communicate with me. We were able to talk back and forth. And guess what comes into your email? Those notifications that things are going to expire. So if that account gets closed, those people don't know that your Dropbox account is going to disappear or your, your uh, credit card is going to get canceled or something like that. So they need to know to keep your email account uh, alive while you're still alive and you know, gracefully otherwise. One thing you could do to make sure um, that a lot of these accounts stay uh, alive after, if something happens to you is turn on two-factor authentication. Now, I've done this, but it kind of, on a couple of things, and I'm still taking my own little baby steps towards it because it's kind of scary. But two-factor authentication basically means that in order to log into something, you not only need the password, you need a code that's sent to some other thing, like uh, a text message to your phone. The nice thing about a lot of these sites, uh, I did this with my husband Steve, is you can have an alternate phone number be, get the, also get the code. So that's kind of nice, so if something were to happen to me, Steve would still be able to get into the account because his, his phone number still is on that uh, account for the authentication. 
So um, I did it on, um, I think the main thing I did it on was my website because that's kind of my whole online presence and that's the one place where Steve could get into it even if something were to happen to me. So if you do two-factor authentication, make sure it's not just to you because then that defeats the purpose of other people getting in later. Another thing we th talked about in the Mac Roundtable session that I'm not giving them any credit for was uh, where your files are. A lot of people now are starting to st uh, store files in Dropbox. I, I don't know if you saw, wait, was it... Uh, is it Google Drive? Google Drive is the one that just went down to 10 bucks a month for a terabyte of storage. So you can pretty much take your whole hard drive, shove it into, into uh, your uh, Google Drive, and you've got off-site backup, basically, at that point for 10 bucks a month. Um, I, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do that, but if you are storing your st stuff on Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox or Box.net, if you're storing stuff there, does it matter? Does it matter if something were to happen to you? Because if you're using a paid account, and then that stopped getting paid, what would happen to that data. Now maybe that's just fine, maybe it would just still be only one copy on your computer and that's all okay, but just, just think about how you're using it and what would be important to you if something were to, uh, you were to be incapacitated and you wanted to be able to get back to all this data. Um, and, and what could be lost, I mean if that's your precious family photos or all of your bills or your tax records, I mean I don't personally keep my tax records in the cloud, but maybe you do, so think about what you could do, uh, might, people might care about that if something were to happen to you. Photos. A lot of us are, nerds tend to be photographers. I don't know why those two things go together, but it seems to go together quite a bit. Do you care about your family photos? If you are the person who has managed the family photos for all these years, maybe you really care what happens to your Flickr account, that your family's going to go, well, that's where all the grandchildren photos are, or that's where all my dog photos are, and we love Skippy, we got to have those photos. So you want to think about how those photos are managed. If, uh, you know, Smugbug is a paid-for service, you got it up there, what would happen to those photos if that account got turned off while you were incapacitated or worse? So that's another angle. It's sort of like the, it's sort of like the Dropbox kind of stuff, but it's photos, right? It's a little different. It's got a different emotional piece to it than maybe your tax records would be. This one was, uh, was really a surprise. Tim was a uh, web developer, and he died and no one had pass their passwords. All of these people who had their websites did not have access to their own websites. And the, uh, the domain hosting companies just said, yep, that's too bad. And they lost their sites. And I mean, one of them was a real estate office. It was a Remax real estate office and they lost their website. They lost their domain. Um, I ended up being contacted by a guy who was a friend of Tim's who was also a developer and he's the one who told me. And so we're looking through, you know, old weird notebooks from 1972 going, well, could this be it? You know, scribbling, little scribbled notes. If all of this had been in LastPass or OnePass, we wouldn't have had a problem. And he had shared that password with someone. What, um, backup services, this one may or may not be crucial, right? If, if uh, I'm, I'm getting all my stuff backed up to crash plan right now. If I were to be incapacitated for a month, well, I'm probably not generating any new data, that's probably not a big deal, and if it got shut off because I didn't pay the bill, that wouldn't be catastrophic, right? It's not a big mess, it would just be a real pain if I had to regenerate this all from scratch. So um, think about whether that matters to you. I know a lot of people are good looking into these transporter things where people have the same, uh, they share transporters. I know my friend Pat is back there and she's hooking me up to her transporter. I, I just want you to think about if you have a transport and you have somebody else's data in your house and their data is in your house, what would happen if your family went, oh, I don't know what this is, let's just throw that away. We don't need that. So that's, a, that's another one to think about, how, how those uh, off-site, on-site backup strategies can affect what it is you want to keep. You would think that it's not all that important what happens to your Instagram account or your Facebook or your Pinterest or whatever. But something terrible happened with Tim. Tim was one of the gentlest, kindest, sweetest men to ever walk the face of this earth. And his account got hacked after he passed away. And it was, uh, it was a spam porn uh, hacker. So here's Tim Reporton's thing coming out with all this wretched, horrible stuff. And I just started getting notes from people going, hey, can't you shut this off? Can't you fix this, Allison? Well, you know what? If he'd had given his last password, one pass password to his wife, we would have been able to fix that. Instead, I had to have her send me to get a death certificate. I filled out all this paperwork, had to be paper mailed with a stamp and mailed it off to Twitter, who then, like two months later, shut off his account. You know, it's not the giant's biggest crisis in the whole world, but I know that would have just destroyed him. I mean, that was just like the worst possible thing. So it turns out there's some things you can do about some of these kinds of accounts. 
It must come later, because it's not my next slide. <laughs> so now let's talk about your stuff. Here's, uh, here's Dorothy and Steve in this giant pile of rubble that we, uh, uh, by the way, we did end up making a profit, I should tell you that. That's the uh, nice thing. I think we made about $2,000, $2,500 above the $2,800. But that was, we, start, we tracked the time it took us at first, but then after about 120 hours, we got tired of writing it down and trying to track it, but packing and shipping and learning how to sell. I didn't know how to sell things on Amazon and eBay and that sort of thing. So we have a couple of su suggestions. Um, you could use a service like OnePass or LastPass, uh, use secure notes in order to inventory the stuff you have. A, a couple of people on uh, the back round table were suggesting, what if Starting today, you know, Katie Floyd has a great comment when she talks about going paperless. She always says, stop digging the hole. Don't go, okay, I have to scan in all of this stuff before I can start going forward. No, just stop digging the hole. You'll go pick that stuff up eventually, but start going forward today. What if today you go out and you buy a new iPhone, you scan in your receipt and you shoved it into, uh, into a secure note, you put down the date and time you bought it and how much you paid for it. That would tell someone whether something was worth something. If they had that little inventory and you had a category in there for what kind of device that was, you would have an inventory. Now I started doing this, I'm not super good at it yet, but it's one of my goals is to get better at doing this. Um, they pointed out this would also be, uh, would help you out with warranties too. When did I buy these things? I don't know. Uh, my father-in-law tapes the receipt to the box or to the back of the device, which is kind of annoying, but uh, anyway, this would, this would give your friends and family a clue whether it was valuable. If I knew that Tim had spent $1,000 on something just a year ago, I would know that that was something I really should pursue. A whole lot of the time that Dorothy and Steve and I spent was just looking things up going, well, I don't know, what do you, what do you think this is? You know, I, I, I don't know, trying to figure out what it was, trying to find out whether it was worth anything, what year did it, was it invented, because it was a lot of uh, older stuff. Um, there's an app called Home Inventory. If you like apps and you like playing with little databases, this is really cool. It's called uh, Home Inventory, and I think the price is on there, but I can't read it. I think it's 20 bucks, so it's a little bit steep. Uh, but it allows you to take a picture of your stuff, and you can put in the date and the time of when you bought it, and allow you to create that home inventory. Certainly useful with um, uh, insurance companies as well, if you have a fire or something like that, that or a theft, that would uh, help you out in that too. Um, I do have a little uh, PSA on that. I found out when I had all my jewelry stolen, they didn't care as much about the receipts as pictures of me with it to be able to prove that I actually did have it. So if you're doing your home inventory, have you with a smile holding up this you know, shiny new iPhone on, with this certain date, that sort of thing. Just a little PSA there. Um, so again, if, if you look at everything in your house, that's just going to overwhelm you. That's going to be way too hard. You're never going to start. But you could start today going forward because you know you're buying a gadget like when you leave here to go to the show floor, right? You know you're just going to buy something. So you could get this and do it. Uh, one cool thing about home inventory is it lets you inventory 10 things before you have to pay. So you can kind of see whether it fits your style and the way you want to use it. Is the uh, file format uh, proprietary for that? Is the file format proprietary? Yes. Um, I, you know what? I don't know. That would be interesting whether like it could spit out a CSV or something like that. Yeah, you know, I'm saying it put it up in Dropbox, and so you lose your uh, your Mac. You'd still have the inventory. Oh, yeah. yeah you could, uh, like it was a PDF, you could drop drop it out. And, yeah, I doubt it would be PDF because it's it, like I said, it is a database sort of thing. Um, but you know, the nice thing is you can try it, put in put in ten items, and see if it uh, what it what it can export. Yeah, that's actually a cool idea. All right, do you love? Oh yeah, question. One of the things I always hear in the podcast is how you talk to the developer, right? The developer, maybe that's an idea. Okay, yeah, Leon is suggesting that's something to ask the developer about. We could find out first whether it actually does have an export format. I didn't even think to check that. But yeah, it, it, one thing I really do like is calling the, uh, writing to developers. That it, it's so often that they write right back to you and tell you, you know, they might say, nope, not going to do it, but at least you know the answer after that. It's funny how I, I've started liking the little developers bigger than the big developers. Like, you're going to write to Microsoft and hope for help or Apple? <laughs> Not too likely, but the person who wrote this might be so passionate about that tool that they go, wow, that's a great idea, we should do that. So do you love being the guy that has that thing that the other guy needs? You know, where the guy says, hey, you know what, uh, my, my Linksys uh, WRT54G just died and I need, a new, uh, I need a new antenna. And I'm like, yeah, I've got one of those. It burned up, but the antenna's still good. Anybody that guy? <laughs> I'm that guy. And apparently Tim was that guy. So um, I had this great idea. What if... We labeled our boxes, crap, <laughs> and not crap. Now this one's not hard, right? You get yourself a sharpie and just go, crap. Had he done that, she would not have shipped us a box this big of floppies. 
She probably spent forty dollars sending it, and I mean, these were these were four hundred meg floppies. I think four hundred k. What were they? K. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it was. I, I opened it up with nope. I mean, that must have cost a fortune to send us to us. One of them was printer paper. <laughs> <laughs> I now give it away as party gifts. People come to my house for dinner. Here, have a ream of paper because I will never use all this paper. I mean, this is a real simple solution. I went in my closet where that WRT 54G that's been burned out and has those good antennas on it. It now says crap on the side of it. So if something happens to me, Steve is not going to have to fish through and figure out what it is. Simple solution. I told you I'd give you some easy ones. One of the mo biggest nightmares, actually it was fun, it was kind of fun to be honest, was the, the, the but we played match game at the house. Dorothy, Dorothy would come in and she'd say, okay, maybe I've seen something that plug into that. And then we'd all go, wait, wait, no, I saw that one. And you know, you did go climb over a bunch of stuff and go find something. Oh, shoot, no, it's round, but it's not the right size. Or, no, that's the wrong volts. That one's the wrong amps or whatever on those electrical terms. And it was a nightmare. This, by the way, is a picture of the ones I have left from Tim's estate. I don't know what they go to. We, we apparently threw those away. I don't know. We did do, I was really ruthless at the beginning. Steve and Dorothy were really good at organizing, never throwing anything away. And I was just like, nope, don't need this. And of course, you know, three weeks, three months later, we'd go, oh, that's what that was. So uh, I'm sure I threw away all the things those power supplies go to. But if anybody needs a power supply, give me a call. Yeah. As someone who has to manage people, it's like this. It is invaluable to put a little sticker on the side of the power supply. So you mean supply. like that? <laughs> I did not even pay you to do that. <laughs> this has brought so much joy in our home that we did this. You know, you climb it around under the desk and you don't know which one to unplug. We do. So we got ourselves a nice little label maker and we make our little labels and we stick them on everything. Now, this is a certain level of anal retentiveness. Maybe you don't have it. When we were on the Mac Roundtable discussion, I was talking about how you can get a label maker. I love this one because it makes you happy while you're alive and it makes your relatives happy when you're gone. So it's a twofer on this one. Right? So when I was talking about this label maker, I thought, well, this, this, is, this is great. This is the way to do it. And then uh, uh, Chuck Joyner from uh, Mac Voices says, well, well, no, I mean, I just use a Sharpie. We use a Sharpie, what do you mean? Sharpies are black, and these are black. He goes, oh no, they sell oh, no. silver Sharpies. Yeah. <laughs> Him and his little fancy pants silver Sharpie, you know? And I don't know, I would not like to have it all scribbled nasty, but if you'll do that, and you won't do the little label maker, like the anal retentive people Steve and I are, you would, uh, you, you'd be happy with that. So if you're gonna do it, do it. That's a great way to go. Uh, somebody else pointed out, sometimes those labels will actually start peeling up uh, from the heat, so, the silver sharpie might be a good plan, so we actually, uh, Dorothy bought me my own silver sharpie after that. So. Anyway, again, this is probably the happiest thing we did for ourselves. Now this one is actually nothing to do with the plot, but this made me so happy. One day, I don't know how I got this idea, I got a couple of these boxes, four or five of these boxes from Target, they're uh, three dollars or whatever, got a bunch of gallon Ziplocs, and I pulled all of the cables out of my drawers, and I threw them out on the floor, and I organized them. It probably only took me an hour or two to do it, and now, when I need a USB cable, I go, USB cables, I don't have to dig through the firewire cables and the weird miscellaneous cables and, and the, and the uh, uh, you know, audio cables and the ethernet cables and everything. This made me so happy, and the time to do it was, it was almost zero. It was really, really quick. And you end up doing it every time you're looking for a cable anyway, so why not just do it all in one fell swoop? I remember when we were talking about that, Bart Bouchatz was on the call, and he said, you know, this is a good idea because all my cables are out on my bed right now because I was just looking for something. So next time you have to look for something, just start sorting them. Get your nose a Ziploc, you write out with a little Sharpie. This makes me so happy. It's so much easier to, to find what I need. When I was running out the door and I realized I was doing the speech and I was going to leave my, need my little uh, dongle for this projector, I went, oh! And I opened the door, I went, boom, pulled it out and I was ready to go. So this one makes you happy. I don't think it's going to help your relatives because we have little baggies full of HDMI cables and Ethernet cables. We have, we have more cables. Don't ever buy an Ethernet cable or anything. Call me up. I'll, I'll send you. <laughs> we could not figure out how to, how to sell them, right? How do you sell, you know, 40 Ethernet cables? I mean, maybe a school or something. I don't know. They're still in my, in my house. So we got a checklist now to go through. I always go too fast. So if you guys have questions, let's uh, bring them on. The, uh, the kind of things we were talking about here is, uh, number one, tell them what credit card is tied to what service. 
If you're not going to use a password manager, make sure you do this in some way. But that's a real easy way to tell in, in uh, LastPass or OnePass, you can say what credit card goes with this service. What's paying for that? If you don't tell them that, they're not going to know to renew it. Next, uh, tell them to keep your email account open for a year. They're not going to think that that's important, but it's going to be really important because of all those things are tied to it. Tell them to keep your cell phone active because of that two-factor authentication you set up, that they're not going to be able to get into your accounts. If you set up two-factor authentication, they're not going to be able to get into those if they shut off your cell phone. Again, uh, Alice kept Tim's cell phone along for a long time, and uh, she's now reverted to her own, but it, she did keep that open for a long time, and that, that made all the difference. That was uh, one big saving grace there. Uh, tell them if you care about your photos in the cloud. Tell them about, about uh, uh, Flickr and SmugMug and any of those other services that you use. Uh, make sure you get those up there. And uh, make sure you tell them what other stuff you have in the cloud. If you've got Dropbox, if you've got uh, uh, Box.net or, or SkyDrive, what is it called, OneDrive now, all those kinds of things. Make sure they pay those bills. Tell them if someone else depends on that cloud storage. You know, I've heard about people now where they'll get a Dropbox account and they're sharing it with somebody else, and all of a sudden you shut down, the, or the Dropbox account gets shut down, all of a sudden they've lost stuff uh, that lives on their hard drive. I don't know if you guys know exactly how that works, but if I have something on my hard drive and it's on Dorothy's hard drive and it's in Dropbox, but my account disappeared, it would disappear from her hard drive. It would actually be erased. It would stop existing on her computer because it exists in all three places synced exactly. So if it disappeared in one, it disappears in the other. David's looking at me with a doubtful look on his face. No, not doubtful. Okay. They, they give you the option now. They do? When, when you delete an account or a share. Okay, he's saying they give, you a, they give you an option when you delete an account or a share. But if you aren't there to do that option, if the account just got closed, I don't know. it might not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Does anybody know? Okay. Uh, tell them about the websites you own. If you're a web developer especially, I mean, even if it's a Tumblr account, if it's something you care about where you want them to write a final hurrah, you know, leave it open for a month or a year or something like that. Um, there's a gentleman, I think he came in the back, where did he go, who was telling me last night that uh, uh, his uh, solicitor in Scotland actually would not allow him to give him his one password which I thought was really, really strange. It's like the guy, they're out in the sticks somewhere, the guy doesn't know about this stuff, doesn't seem to think anything electronic would be important in the case of your death. I told him to get a new solicitor. But, uh, <laughs> let's see, tell him to keep your backups running and pay those bills. That's definitely important. Uh, there's a thing called Google Inactive Account Manager and you can actually make decisions right now about what happens to your account. So if you Google, Google an inactive account manager, you could go in and say, I want this to, if you don't hear from me for six months, I want you to make sure that you, you fill in this, or, you know, you take care of this information, just keep it there, and after this length of time, this is what can happen to it. Uh, this is what I definitely did go in and do, it was really, really easy. Um, I think uh, Facebook has a way of doing it after somebody's death. Yeah, yeah, Liam? Uh, on the Google all Google services. I believe so. It would be interesting. I couldn't swear that it also takes into account YouTube, but uh, nowadays I think they're, yeah, they're yeah. I think they're congealing more and more into one company than they used to be. Yeah, I, I don't remember it being a separate thing or saying it wasn't included. So uh, the next one, uh, I said, give someone access to your password manager. Tell them about it. I asked my friend uh, Robert Lockman uh, and, and his wife Lorelai, we were talking about this, and I said, I said, well, Lorelai, you're not the geek, he's the geek, do you know how to get into his accounts? And she turns to him and says, do I? <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell her, write her a letter, says, here's what it is, you know. It doesn't count if you did it and you didn't tell him you did it or how important it was. Put your cables in zippered bags. You're going to love that. Trust me. That is somebody. If anyone in here does it, please send me an email. And tell me how happy it makes you after you do it. You're going to do it. Oh, you've already done. It. How happy does it make you? It's wonderful. What's that? All right. All right. Good. 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 Well, I'm telling you. See, two testimonials. You don't have to listen to me. They're telling you how great that is. It's such a funny one. Get yourself a label maker or that little cute silver sharpie for your power supplies. Again, make you really, really happy. Can you get that shot from Chuck's Yeah, in fact, if you would go ask Chuck, go out up and ask Chuck that you would like to see his silver trophy, he would like that. And of course, label your boxes crap and not crap. Yes? You were talking about solicitor. Uh, 
get someone in your password manager and tell them about it. Uh, actually, uh, my wife is the non-techie, and uh -huh. so my investment broker has volunteered to keep track of all the information. Like I type stuff up, send it to him, and he's going to share it with my wife when mine comes. Oh, okay. So how does he know, like today, if you created a new account? I have to tell him. Yeah. yeah. If, so, they, if they have access to the password manager that you're using actively, it, it, it shortens that time. It sounds like you've got a pretty good process, but I would do that maybe once a year. Oh, yeah, sure. But if it's in one password or LastPass, then it would be immediate. But basically, some people who are in the business of helping people at a you know, time of death or whatever like that will actually go the next step and they'll be the one willing to share your I one password. Your okay, password. yeah, that's good. Whether that solicitor wasn't before, they, 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 yeah, I would think I would think that'd be more likely. Everybody, did everybody hear what he said? You hear him okay? Yeah, that is good to know. By the way, the way I shared my one pass or my last pass was Steve put it in his last pass, and he, we put his last pass in my uh, last pass. So now I, I don't know. If, I'm not sure what we figured out if we both go down in the plane together. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have done a will or a trust, but our lawyer was hilarious. He says, "Okay, he says, okay, you and Steve are in a car crash. Uh, kids put the money, right? Okay." Now, you and Steve and Lindsay and Kyle, you guys are all on a plane, and the plane crashes, you know. And each thing he did, he just made it a successful, successively worse disaster. Pretty soon there was, a, you know, there was a giant earthquake, and the entire grandma and grandpa are gone, the dog's gone. Okay, now who does it go to? But he made it fun <laughs> in a twisted kind of way. So anyway, uh, the last page of the presentation is what, uh, it's a trademark, uh, Link Farm of Doom, Donald Byrne always calls it Link of Doom. Uh, this is some passwords to some of the things I talked about. Um, the Facebook memorial request, that was the thing I talked about where you can have uh, your Facebook uh, page a memorial after you pass away so people can put their wishes down and that sort of thing. And the Google account uh, manager, real good. At, I, actually, I think those are hot links to something much longer. So if you go to, and there's the home inventory link too, that one's definitely one longer. Uh, if you go to slideshare.net slash nocilicast, you will be able to find uh, all of the charts there uh, that, I've, that I've talked about here. And uh, I love to get email for my podcast. I do, a, I do a segment on my show called Dumb Question Corner. So if you've got a dumb question you think everybody else knows the answer to, I think that's probably how I met Leon in the first place there. Uh, was, uh, it, it's a nice way to ask questions that you think are uh, maybe too stupid to ask in public, but if you do it through this forum, it's a, it'll be, uh, try to get the answers to people. Um, I actually have some uh, some silly things to give away. These are uh, anybody wants one of these. Um, I, this is getting rid of crap in my house, but uh, <laughs> well, I was going to send these to people, but I realized silver they were sharpies. Yeah, no silver sharpies. These are called a, a bud sock. It's a little uh, weird little conical piece of cloth that you shove your headphones in, and it keeps them from tangling. It makes them uh, into a loop, and once once your headphones are in a loop, they can't get tangled. So. If anybody wants one of these, just come on up and get one, and I get some business cards. If anybody wants those, email me. <laughs> okay, Leon's coming up. I'm in one of those. All right, thank you, everyone.